Welcome to Boots Buy. My name's William. Today we're talking about five things you must know before buying a pair of boots. Let's get into it. Guys, thank you so much for joining me. As I said, today we're talking about five things you must know before buying a pair of boots. Let's kick it off with number one, you gotta know about the welt. The welt refers to how the sole and the upper are attached, and depending on the type of welt you get in your boot, it makes a big difference in the long run. So you can have it a boot that's less expensive, maybe it has a cemented sole because that's a much easier, much faster construction, or you can have a hand-done welt, which is gonna be really expensive because it's super labor intensive, or you can go somewhere in the middle, like a Goodyear welt, a Goodyear uh, a split welt, like this Grant Stone Diesel, this has a Goodyear split welt, which is, you know, pretty water resistant. It's not waterproof. There are waterproof boots out there. Sometimes they're cemented. A lot of different types of welts, lots of different ways to make boots. And one of the biggest considerations is, do you want something that's waterproof? I know a lot of guys who work construction sites, they want waterproof. In that case, you would want something probably with a cemented sole uh, and then make sure it says it's waterproof. Not all cemented soles are waterproof, but that is one of the better ways of getting a fully waterproof boot. Like for instance, the Timberland six inch classic Wheat Nubuck uh, work boot. That is a classic example of a waterproof boot with a cemented sole. Or you could go something a little more uh, like old school uh, one of the better known ways of making boots is called a Goodyear welt, and this is really renowned for being a high quality, classy style of making boots. One of the big benefits of having a Goodyear welt is that a cobbler can go, when the sole wears out, when the heel wears out, a cobbler can take that off and they can actually recraft a, a new one on there so that your boots are pretty much good as new. You can keep that upper leather really, uh, you know, it, it, that leather doesn't go bad. It's really the sole that wears out first in most boots, so you can take that off, replace it. So you can actually afford to buy a much nicer pair of boots and then just keep recrafting the sole over the years, you know, five years down the road, it needs to be replaced. It's fairly easy to replace with a Goodyear welt. There's also a type of welt known as a Blake stitch, and you'll note that by the stitching around on the sole, and that is a much lighter, much sleeker type of welt. It is not as water resistant as a Goodyear welt, so it's a little bit, you know, I wouldn't, you don't really see Blake stitch welts on any sort of, uh, anything other than a dressy boot, that's typically where they're used, but they're also recraftable, so you can always get a new sole on these if you want, if you wear them enough to where the sole wears out. So the most important thing about a welt when you're buying a pair of boots is that, do you want something waterproof? Maybe you want it cemented then. If you want something recraftable, you wanna invest in a pair of boots with great leather on the upper so that you can wear the leather in and then over time, five, six years, however long it takes when the sole wears out, you can get that recrafted. Then you want something like a Goodyear welt or a Blake stitched welt. Number two thing you gotta know is about the insole. Now take a look at these two boots. They look pretty similar, right? They're both mock toes. This one's from Thoroughgood, this one's from Red Wing, and on the outside, they look pretty much exactly the same, minus the fact that the leathers are completely different. But on the inside, there is a huge difference. Now, the Red Wing Classic Mock Toe, this has a thick piece of leather as the insole, and then the midsole is made entirely out of cork. So this is all natural insole. It uses all natural um, materials. But the Thoroughgood, on the other hand, that actually uses a pour-on insole that is removable, and then it has a fiberboard uh, midsole in there. What's the practical difference? Well, one, the Thoroughgood Mock Toe is much more comfortable right out of the gate because it has that squishy pour-on insole. But the downside is that the Red Wing Mock Toe is going to last a lot longer. And the more you walk in a Red Wing Mock Toe with that leather and cork, your foot's gonna sink into that bed a lot more can be much more comfortable and it's also going to be a lot more durable. However, it doesn't just stop at the surface level, there's also the midsole to consider. Now whereas the Red Wing Classic Mock, this has all natural materials, it has no shank in it. Whereas the Thoroughgood Mock Toe has a fiberglass shank. Now, it might not seem like too big of a deal to you what's on the inside of the, the middle of the sole, but having a fiberglass shank or a steel shank can make a big difference in the arch support that you get in your boot. In general, boots have great arch support regardless of whether they have a shank or not. So if you have pretty regular arches, I wouldn't, it's not like a, having a shank isn't a make or break thing if you have decent arches in your feet. But if you do have flat feet, 
well then having a steel shank is a pretty important factor for arch support. Overall, my favorite is I prefer to have a natural insole, something with leather and cork, uh, something that is going to wear in over time that I can really, a pair of boots can start to feel like mine. I prefer that over a synthetic insole. The third thing you have to know, and this one is gonna seem pretty obvious, but it is the fit. Most boot sizes, I'm talking about the majority of brands, Red Wing, Wolverine, Thursday, Grant Stone, Taft, any of the major boot brands, these generally run about a half size smaller or half size larger than sneakers. So if you get a size 11 in sneakers, you should get a size 10 and a half in pretty much most boots. But definitely take a look through all the reviews that a boot has because you're gonna notice some differences. You need to kind of crowdsource, especially if you have strange feet, you know, it's like your feet aren't typical, aren't normal, then you wanna kind of crowdsource all those different reviews and see, okay, this guy's saying, oh, my left foot's bigger than my right and this was all messed up. You wanna note those things because you might wanna actually get, you know, your true sneaker size. You might wanna get that size as well just to have extra room and add an insole in there. You could do it a lot of different ways, but in general, most boot brands, I always start half size smaller than my sneakers and I go from there, read the reviews and see if I need to switch that up. You can actually go to a store like Red Wing and they do fitting surfaces there. You stand on this crazy machine and it measures your foot and gives you a little heat map. It's pretty cool. You can get your sizing there. Uh, you can, if you wanna know your true Brannock sizing, you can go into a foot store, a foot store, a shoe store. You can go into one of those and they have those crazy little meta devices that measures your foot width and length. You can get your sizing there and compare it to whatever boot brand you're looking at. They'll also have your Brannock score uh, and how that boot matches up to that. The fourth thing you need to know before buying a pair of boots is the leather. Different leather types require different sorts of conditioners in order to keep them lasting as long as possible. Here I have the Red Wing Iron Ranger. This is their amber harness leather. This is a very easy leather, leather to care for. It just requires your basic products, whereas the Thursday Diplomat, this has a much more matte appearance. It's, 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 a, it's a regular leather. This is their Rugged and Resilient line, but it's very, very rough. And so it's gonna require a little bit different type of care. I'll use Bic 4 on this one, whereas I'll use something like Venetian Shoe Cream here. You can really find out what type of leather you're getting, look up different, like what, how to treat blank boots, and then you'll get a good idea of how you can best care for this leather so that it will still look great three, four years down the line. It's also important to note how thick the leather is. So if you're getting a boot and it has one and a half millimeter thick leather, well then you know it's not gonna be great for keeping the cold out, for keeping water out. It can get waterlogged a lot easier. Now one brand I really like, Jim Green, they make really ex inexpensive boots. They're from South Africa and their Razorback boot is really inexpensive. It's like $140, you can get it on Amazon, and it uses 2.2 millimeter full grain leather, so it's quite thick, and then it also has a 1.6 millimeter leather lining. So all in all, that is quite a thick piece of leather, especially for a pair of hiking boots. You wanna make sure you're getting a nice, thick piece of leather in between you and the elements. It's gonna take a little while to break in, but the experience after that is going to be very rewarding. Fifth thing you wanna know before buying a pair of boots is how thick the top lift or heel cap is on your pair of boots. Now this is just something more particular to me because the heel is always the first thing for me to wear out. This could be a different factor for you. I want you to think about where's the place on your pairs of boots or your shoes that tends to wear out the fastest. Maybe it's right along here. I know a lot of guys wear right along uh, the ball of their foot. That wears out the fastest for whatever reason. Uh, I know a lot of guys, uh, the way their instep is formed, this rubs against their top of their foot and can give them blisters on top of their foot really quickly. So you wanna watch out for that. For me, the biggest problem area I always have is with the heel, this wearing down. For some reason where I walk, it just scrapes it, by, scrapes it down and it becomes slanted and just looks weird. So I always check out how thick the top lift is. For instance, this pair of Grandstone Diesels has eight millimeters of rubber right here before it hits the leather. And that means as this rubber starts to wear down, sure, it might not be aesthetically pleasing, but as soon as it bites into that leather, then it's gonna be a problem getting a cobbler to resole. I have to do like a resole at that point. But if I keep it where it's just uh, wearing down the rubber, then it's no problem at all. They can just rip it off, slap on a new one, glue it on, tack it on, done, no problem. So for number five, it's a little bit of the X factor. It's not necessarily you need to know about the heel cap, but you need to know about that problem area that 
boots and shoes tend to have on your feet and you need to account for that. Look it up, see if you can find it in different reviews. Um, sometimes if it's like a top lift issue or a, yeah, right here, not a top lift, but an instep issue, then it's a little bit harder to read. So you might have to try on a pair of boots, maybe a couple pairs of boots to see if, how it just wears in. But in general, uh, a lot of guys I know have the same common problem with the heel wearing down. So anything that is above four millimeters or thicker, that's gonna be a pretty good bet for a top lift. If you found this video helpful, please give me a thumbs up and also hit that subscribe button down below. I really, really appreciate it. For more tips and the best boots of this year, check out these videos popping up right here. Until next time, put your best boot forward.